Hello guys, good afternoon and welcome back. We are and uh, to discuss with you today. I am Sam Star 2020 PSV problem na and it's a sample survey problem. Uh whenever sample the, the idea of some I why the reason I wanted to make this video is because whenever this idea of sample survey comes in it comes with a lot of you know um thought that oh my god it must be so calculative in nature and i have to work so hard but this example this corresponding problem of this uh, isi in fact in general isi problems are really elegant touch each of those problems so can i hope uh, you will understand that elegant touch uh, in this problem too and that's how the problem is designed uh, so let's go back to the problem first the problem asks the for the following that um if so let's see the framework of the problem if a fine if a finite population n has n units and uh, x i in the value are with the ith unit and what we are doing is that we are uh, in the step one uh, we are calculating the uh, we are taking an srs wr without replacement uh, size of popul size of small n population from the population and we are calling the sample s1 and we are defining denoting the sample in my x n bar so we have a really good uh, opportunity to uh, like you know uh, we have a really good opportunity to understand the the population mean hi good evening understand the population mean via the sample mean the capital x and bar but what it has done here is that it has done another step of work where it's told that if you draw after this stress w o r uh, we get a size sample of size small n and out of this srsw or sample what we are doing is the following we are uh, drawing another srsw or with the with the replacement sample of size small m and now what we are doing we are trying to estimate the population mean with this based on this m sample units y1 y2 or ym okay how we are doing it we are doing it by this unbiased by not this unbiased but estimator tf there is a sample mean or like the second sample ka mean okay the step two ka sample ka mean so this is so there are two estimates uh, for this uh, population mean is that first step we are doing drawing by srs wor and we are denoting by x n bar and again we are doing step two and we are get another estimator that is tm bar a right? tm hat okay what is y bar now the question comes naturally which is a better estimate as we know right the question naturally comes which is a better estimate and that is done that is asked by the question that first you have to check that both of them are actually unbiased estimator and the next question tells you that if given an unbiased it's uh, the mhc will be equal to the variance right so it makes sense to ask that which has a lower variance okay that makes a lot of sense which is the lower variance this tm hat or xn bar now uh, while i did this problem i will tell you something this you know this i will tell you a very good idea and elegant idea to understand whether this is the variance is actually increasing or decreasing without doing any calculation that i will tell towards the end of the video but let's go with the usual mathematics first uh try to understand that we are first required to find out that tm bar tm hat is unbiased okay and uh, let's try to formulate the problem mathematically because we need to do like we didn't understand what exactly is going on in a mathematical framework we have a Here's the idea of what's really going on. So, what is we are doing? We are first defining a sample x one dot or x n that is by the lower variance means uh, which has a lower variance, like whose variance value is low. For one, so uh, the sample x one dot or x two dot or x n that is the first step after the SS W R. We are defining the sample by x curl, and the second step when we are getting the sample y one dot or y m, we are defining it by y curl. Two two samples are there. It's a joint distribution. We are meaning meaning by that joint random variables together. Okay, so this is the definition. Uh, why we are doing definition? We'll understand it very soon. So let's try to understand what we really have now. So uh, this result is really important that in SRS WR and SRS WR both the sample mean ka unbiased estimator. Okay, the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. This you can really prove it easily. Okay, then you must prove it. that's the like you must always prove it okay so let's go back to what we really know about this problem from here given the framework the step 1 and step 2 given the framework we have that x curl the first sample the step 1 sample x curl okay 
is actually follows the first wr on population actual population with mean mu say okay the mean is actually mu is uh, this x small xn bar okay now understand that uh let's understand the so therefore x bar follows the first wr with pop, like on population with mean mu and we know that from the result that since uh, in FSW or the sample mean is an unbiased estimator. So we get expectation over X curl, Xn bar is the actual population mean. We know that. Now let's try to find out what we have on step two. But, I mean, I am writing this very clearly because this is how we have to write in the PSB, okay? So this is really, really important. This is a mathematical framework and you should be writing that. This is the way, this is, the, this is where you will be differentiated with other people in the examination hall to the ISI professors. So just make sure you do this, okay? Just be mathematical. Uh, so now, given this, that okay, now you know that y y curl given so the step two is what now fixing this sample is sort of a bootstrapping method. Okay, fixing this sample, we are taking another sample y curl from this sample. So therefore, with respect to y curl, x curl is the population. So what how we can automatically define that that x curl, y curl given x curl is an SRS wr given that x curl is the population like on x curl with mean you know the mean of this x curl is capital X and bar. So since again, uh, given this uh, framework, we have that y curl given x curl follows this is w r. So its expectation be also of this y m bar will be x n bar, the population mean. So here the population in this given x curl is capital x n bar, right? So we have this mathematical framework now. We have this mathematical definition now. What is our aim? Our aim is to find out expectation over y curl, the y m bar. Okay, but we know ex expectation of y curl given x curl. That's the idea. We know that, but we need to find out expression over y curl. That's a basic idea. And you know how to do it? That is exactly by then by done by conditional expectation. Suppose you want to find the expectation of x over cap, like some random variable x. What we do, we condition over y and we first condition over x given y and then we uh, condition over y. This is a smoothing property of expectation. And we'll exactly use this to find out. We will exactly use this to find out that uh, the expectation okay that's the basic idea this is a smoothing property and exactly we use this to find out and this is exactly you should write in the examination hall in your paper or whenever you're writing this sort of proofs okay so we have the smoothing property and we will be using this and also you can see it's akin to the given information that that's why written the information over here that we know that x curl we know y given x curl so what we will do we will just do it over here again we will do y given x curl and we'll do expectation of x curl we'll do it in two steps and that's exactly done by smoothing property. So we need to find an expression of y curl of y m bar. And we do the smoothing property. And why we did the smoothing property? Because we know the distribution, like how y give y curl given x curl behaves like. So expectation of x curl, we did the smoothing property just by the like, property of the smooth condition expectation. What we got is that now observe that you know that expectation of y curl given x curl of y m bar is capital X and bar. So we use that property, we replace it over here and we get expression of X curl of X and bar, capital X and bar, which is essentially the first part. So we are going backwards in some sense. By conditioning, we are first solving the uh, step two and then going back to step one. That's exactly what we are doing over here. And we got that it's actually unbiased. Okay. And exactly this is the same uh, thing that we will do in the, con in the like, conditional variance computation. Okay. So when we are discussing this question based on this ISM chart, Problem. So I will not go into those uh, other parts, real example of those stuff. Uh, rather, we will be discussing in our classes or some other day. Okay. But thanks for asking the question. Okay. So this is what we have till now. And let's see that what was the next question. So we are under, understood it's an unbiased, unbiased estimator okay, of the population mean. We have got that already. Now we have to ask that which is the lower, which, which are the following as a lower variance. And exactly the same thought came to my mind as yours that do I need to compute the whole thing? We need to compute the variance, and we know that computing the variance of SRS WR and SRS WOR is really a like a tremendous job to do. So what we will do whenever this thought will come in your exam, this is a tremendous job to do. It's a, you have to calculate a lot. That means it's not an you don't you need not do it in that way. Okay, uh, ISI never gives problems like that where you need to do a lot of computations. So you have to use your intellect somehow. Okay, some creativity out there. And what we do is that we do the exactly same thing that we use smoothing property. We know the information of this stuff individually, right? 
So we'll use the smoothing property of variance and see that what really happens over here. And that's the like a like a breathtaking uh, like a step over here, which differentiates from the other computational ways. So let's find out the variance. So we need to find out variance of y of x. So we can by conditional smoothing property of variance, we know that is expectation of x. Okay, expectation of x of variance of y given x of y given x and x variance of x into yeah, of into like like variance of x of the random variable expectation of y given x of y given x okay that's the basic idea so that's the smoothing property of variance that's exactly the smoothing property of variance now understand that we need to find out this prop term variance of y curl of y m bar and what we do we just uh, use this above with smoothing property to get that expectation of x curl of this plus variance of this now understand what we know we know this term we know y given x of the expectation is xn bar and this is what this variance term is actually greater than or equal to zero and expectation of if y is a, if t is a random variable greater than or equal to zero then expectation of t is also greater than or equal to zero so we use this property the variance is greater than or equal to zero for the expectation is greater than or equal to zero and we get that uh, variance of this is like this turns out the variance of xn like the actual xn bar the first step ka estimate ka variance okay so therefore what do we get over here we get that the variance of tm bar is greater than the variance of xn bar okay tm hat is greater than variance of xn bar and it makes sense actually okay so there's a basic proof idea you need not need to compute all the whole things you just do this you have to understand why we need this that's why this first step is important once you understand the formula the problem mathematically often you have all the data that what we know from the given conditions and what we need to find and that's always that gives you the idea of what theorems to use, what results to use. That often clears the path of your like it paves the path of your understanding and solving the question. Okay, that's how we solve. And uh, let's try to understand what are the food for thought. But I will tell you a really interesting example. Okay, now understand this in a very intuitive framework. This is really this is the most important part. Now, now suppose say let's say you know out out of contradiction. Suppose say by the step two the variance decreases of T M from xn bar so in the first step we have a uh, we have an estimate xn bar in the second step we have tm hat okay uh, other estimator in the first step we have an estimate xn bar in the second step we have an estimate of tm hat and we are asking whether tm hat is a uh, has a lower variance or not we found that mathematically tm has a higher variance now suppose tm hat has a lower variance that would have meant what that meant that again if if we have done step 3 in the same way i have done step 2 it will give a lower variance and this means that we can arbitrarily decrease the variance okay by this sampling and sampling and sampling and which doesn't make sense actually at the end of the day we can just select one sample and tell it's a lower variance it doesn't make sense right so that's the idea that that's also an intuition you can, if you write this observation of yours and if you write these ideas of yours in exam or if you just understand this it will give an ex, it will fetch you extra credits of course but try to understand the scenario by doing a sampling and in another step, if it would have decreased the variance, okay, then it means that doing it another step, it will decrease the variance further and further and further and further, it will keep on decreasing. And it cannot really happen, okay, the variance cannot really keep on decreasing and go to zero, right? And that's the basic idea. And it can go to one, that means it can really go to zero. That means you can really decrease the variance, but that's not really possible, right? So you can also give this argument to um, uh, also give your intuition of the whole idea okay. so that's a really interesting way to look and look into it so let's see what are the further thoughts you can do so first you can also solve the question for the initial srswr and srswr in the step two okay and also for the srswr part and uh, you can also prove the increasing variance idea without doing the variance competition already told that now also understand that in the second step when we are doing any sampling scheme okay if just it for this all the results to be like all the results to be true we just need the idea that we just need the idea see we just need the idea that this is actually unbiased that is we just need this idea that expectation of y bar given x curl y curl given x curl of this tm hat is unbiased we just need that so the second step can be really anything so you can really prove that so just need a sampling step so that the second step is unbiased so you can also generalize this idea in this way and also don't remember to for like uh, forget to practice the sswr and sswr computation because it really gives an idea into the hypergeometric distribution and stuff like that so it's really important for you to understand though okay
So these are thoughts I place on to the table, and I hope to see your thoughts coming soon about the further, uh, like this food for thought, and do under the like do try to understand the idea of that variance idea without computation part. Okay, it's really really important, and we will get back to your different problem next day. Until then, stay tuned and stay blessed, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It has got five thousand, uh, five hundred. Sorry, soon soon it will become five thousand, five hundred. subscribers so yeah thank you for your love and support see you in the next video bye bye